So in today's episode, Danny's going to tell us about 21 things every camper must have before they ever leave the home the first time in their new RV. So don't go away. Hello, America. I'm Lynn. And I'm Danny, and welcome to RV America. Welcome back. And as Lynn said, we'll, we'll be talking about the 21 essential items that you must have before you pull out of your driveway in your new RV. That's right, but before we get started on that, we thought we would take this opportunity and give you a glimpse of Frida. That's right, Frida is our 2016 Forest River Forester 2861 DS. And Frida stands for freedom. And freedom is what she gives us to be able to do all the adventures and take all the adventures that we hope to take over the next several years. So let's get to the dirty part first. The septic, the sewer, the nightmare of all early first time RVers. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the number one thing. We have five things dealing with the septic. And the number one thing is disposable gloves. This way you'll feel safer. And just in case you have a little bit of uh, an accident or a little bit of water comes out, you're safe. Now remember, just because you have gloves on it, you still need to wash your hands afterwards. So these are available in most big box stores. All right. And the second must have is the sewer hose. We've got these off of Amazon. They're Campo Deluxe. It comes in two sets. It comes with end caps. Uh, you don't need it, the two set, but we thought 20 feet was about the right length, and we liked it because it was in two separate pieces. It also came with uh, a clear elbow. A clear elbow tells you when the dirty part's gone, so you'll know when things are clean. So. Uh, it has a built-in donut that goes down into the septic area at the park, so that will help you. So this was very good. Now the thing I would tell you is when you're attaching this to your RV, you'll, you'll see these bayonet style uh, connections, and you would want to make sure that you get all four of these connections twisted and all the way down to the, to the part where it connects to your RV. Then you won't have to worry about is it going to pop loose and hoses going everywhere. So you will need to get this, and even, I wouldn't. Even, I would even say practice putting it on and off. Just make sure your valves are closed, always closed before you're you're uh, putting these on. You don't want to have a mess on your hands, literally a mess on your hands. Number three would be your sewer hose support. This is about 15 feet long. You can get different sizes, but what it's for is to keep your hose off the ground. A lot of RV parks require you to, to throw this out and to have it on the ground and have your hose running through it down to your to the uh, sewer and the for the, the park is providing. And it keeps uh, it helps with the gravity too to feed it down that way. Let me talk about the fourth item. Most newer RVs are going to have a black water clean out or black water flush and we have one here and what you need to do is have a separate hose it doesn't have to be black but you want to have a separate hose that you connect to your water water and then run it through here to flush it out and a bonus here is always use a timer on your phone anytime you're adding water into one of these systems to make sure you do not forget about it and then have water damage in, in your rig at some somehow, some way. And like I said, you don't have to have a black hose. What I've done before is taken a hose and just put some black electrical tape, tape around it just so it helps remind me, oh, this is just for the sewer system. This is just for flushing the black tank because you never want to get them mixed up and use that for drinking water next time. And the fifth thing, with the sewer system are these Campco RV 
toilet treatment drop-ins. These are citrus. We love uh, we love how it makes our tank smells. We never have a problem with it. And just so we always would tell you to drop it in through the toilet and add three, or four, or five gallons of water with it to, to have it dissolving in your system. Those come from Amazon too. Yes, thank you. We didn't get these through Amazon, so you're you're welcome. We'll put some links to some of these items down below. All right. Now let's talk about the next area. We got five items that you will need for your water system. Now if you notice, these are not necessary, but I like to put things in bins that keep them separated, keep them safe. Uh, I even put the sewer in a separate bin from the your fresh water items. So let's talk about these five things. Number one, this little thing is essential. It's a water pressure regulator. You go to a park and the pressure could be 110 PSI. That is going to bust your plumbing in your inside your rig. You need to be smart. If you don't get any of these items, this is one of the two that you must, must get. So have a pressure washer regulator. You can get these anywhere. Uh, these were given to us by the previous owner, gave us a lot of stuff, so that really, really helped us a lot and we didn't have to go purchase things. But if you buy a new one, you're going to have to go out and buy a lot of stuff. So you have to get pressure regulator. They make some with the gauges on them. They'll tell you exactly what pressure you're getting. And that might be an upgrade that I'll get soon, but this is essential. So pressure regulator is number one. The second thing. Some might not consider this essential, but I think it is for a couple of reasons. This is a Y connection for your water hoses. You're going to use one for your fresh water. It's going to come out of the faucet from the campground, and you're always going to attach your fresh water to this. What this does is give you a second outlet that if you want to use a hose, and connect it to it, you have a way to spray off something that you just um, maybe gotten dirty when you're out at the lake or whatever the case may be. You have a second Y, second uh, connector to this. So that gives you some help. But what it also does is I always make sure that if, when I'm doing flushing the black tank, I'm using this side. And I, I'll, I'll mark these with a black piece of electric tape so I know which side is the one that I'm going to never put my fresh water hose onto. So, the second thing is a Y connector. That's really handy if you have kids too because kids always get dirty and sandy and you can hose them down before you bring them back in the camper. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and grandkids, right? Grandkids. All right. So, the next number three that is essential. This is a RV water filter. The, the water at every park is different. It's going to taste different. It might have different particles in it. These will take those particles out. They're different uh, levels. This is the one, probably one of the basics. And you can go up and spend more and more money. But this would be the essential items. Is, the, is it having, this is Taste Pure uh, KDF Carbon RV Water Filter. So this would be the third thing. And I always put the pressure regulator on this side, I don't want it the, the water to be, uh, that it's unregulated to go through this because it could, it could possibly damage it is what I've read in the past. So, so the third thing is the water regulator. Number four is a dedicated fresh water hose. Uh, some people get a different color, you don't have to. You can use the tape method that I talked about before. Is you can put blue tape around this if you want, wanted to. That you know this is going to be clean water only, always. We're not going to use it to hose things off. We're not going to use it to um, flush the black tank. This is just for our, our water. And, and something to re remember is that we try to keep uh, Clorox wipes. You can wipe down the end of these as you're taking the black water tank, uh, black water flush hose off. So this is essential having one that is made for water 
uh, one that's lead free and is made is approved for uh, dispensing water. So that's the fourth thing. And the fifth thing would be a 90 degree connection. What what this is is you would put it in your RV. I won't screw it all the way in. I'll get it started here. And so what that does is give you an angle. Instead of your hose, instead of your hose dangling straight off and having an angle down like this and putting a lot of pressure on your hose, it's eventually going to wear right there. What this does is have it going straight down. That way you don't have any pressure on your vital freshwater hose. Also the parts to the camper because they're, some of the campers aren't made so well. She's been listening. <laughs> so the, uh, the plastic here, it gives a lot of pressure there. On there, as Lynn said, it protects the plastic part on your RV. It's, it's made with cheap RV parts. So that is uh, something that is very uh, worthy to note is that this will help protect your hose and the connection there. Because if that breaks, it's going to be a lot harder to replace than just picking up one of these. So those are the five essential water items. Okay, we talked about the sewer. We talked about your water. Let's finish the utilities here and talk about your electric. What are the essential items you need for electric? I've got five essential items that you're going to need. Remember I told you about the pressure regulator? That it was, if you didn't buy any of these things, that was one of the things you needed of the two that I suggest that you buy. The second thing would be a surge protector. They come in, this is a, a surge, surge guard model 34830. It's for a 30 amp system. If you happen to have a 50 amp system, of course you need to get a, uh, protection for your 50 amp system. What this does is let you know when you pull up if the campground system is working properly. What you don't want to do, just as with the, you don't want the water pressure to ruin something in your rig, you don't want a spike and voltage to burn up your wa hot water heater, your refrigeration, any part of electrical system in the, the RV, your air conditioner, you want to make sure that you're protecting your system. There's, there's nothing worse than having an electrical issue. It's hard to track down. So this will hook up this particular model. There's cheaper ones than this. There's more expensive ones than this. But what this will do is it will, when you hook it up, to your system before you hook it up you're going to turn the, to the electric pole yes thank you when you hook it up to your uh, the electrical pole the pedestal there at the park you get a light to say the power is on and then it's going to go through a diagnostic system it's going to it's going to take about a minute or actually a, uh, 120 seconds so two minutes and it will go through to see if there's any kind of problem and your box will tell you the diagnosed if there was a problem if, if you had red lights or if you had the yellow lights or if you had green lights if there's a surge and this is lit you know you 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 have a problem you need to, to make sure you're uh, using one of these and keeping the surge from attacking your system it's come in handy for us a couple times when the system uh, surged one of the first places we camped they had a, a, a voltage issue and it I think it helped us a lot the second thing you must have is the proper extension cord. These are not your everyday small extension cords that you have at the house. You see how thick these are. These are made for the 30 amp or the 50 amp as whatever your system might have. But you must have a cord that will go from your surge protector and you'll connect it to your RV. We have, have to have two hoses or two extension cords. It's not necessary, but there are times that you might be further away from the pedestal than, than you might want to be or you, you, you can reach. Instead of moving your RV, you have extension to, to use a second cord to, to be able to reach your electricity. So let's talk about 
the third thing. We'll talk about the third and fourth thing. You'll have what what they call uh, is adapters or dog bones, and they're kind of like a dog bone, and that's where they get their name. We've got two of these. I, I have to let, leave one, but I think you need one to to uh, to level down. If you're a 30 amp, you need to level down to 110. If you're ever trying to uh, keep your refrigeration cold or, or just running off 110, it's your mooch docking or boondocking somewhere. And this will take 30 amp down to a 110. And this is really handy. So I think it's a, a must have because you never know if you're going to be pulling up some, someone. This might be something you can wait to the one of the last things you get. And then the other one, for us, if we're at a place that has 50 amp, we have to take it down from 50 amp down to our 30 amp to, to work with our system. So Those that would, are really handy in the Boondockers Welcome stays too. Yes, if you're if you're at Boondockers Welcome or uh, Harvest Hoods let, let you use electricity, they, those are great tools to use. So I'll put up a picture of the the fourth item, the other one I just talked about that takes it down from 50 to 30. I, I failed to bring that one, so I do apologize there. I think that's your wife's fault. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I won't blame her. I should have remembered. All right. So the fifth thing that you need to have are fuses. If you've been around anybody that's had an RV for any amount of time, they will tell you this is extremely important. Because if you didn't have the surge protector and you blew some of your fuses, what are you going to do for the rest of the week while you're out RV unless you have some fuses? So you can get very cheap. We got these on Amazon, uh, very reasonably priced. It has assortment of all kinds of fuses that you, you'll need in your RV. So this is something that I consider essential so the fifth item the fifth item is fuses that is five things for your electrical system so, all right we're on the home stretch now let's talk about the last things that i consider essential when you go camping you know you're going to need some leveling blocks you're going to come up to a spot that might not be completely level and you're going to have to use some of these blocks we got about 15 of these blocks you can use a piece of wood whatever the case may be, but these would be essential to level your your RV. Now every every rig comes with different systems. Some are manual leveling systems. This happens, uh, they installed a Bigfoot leveling auto leveler and it works great and we really love it. We, we do have to put these under to protect sometimes asphalt at an RV or when you're going to a friend's house. So have yourself some leveling blocks. The second thing in the miscellaneous items would be a chop. Now with a motorhome, you, most of the time you're going to put on emergency brake. That will keep your rig from rolling. But if you have a travel trailer or if you have a fifth wheel and you unhook it from your rig, from your, your truck, then you no longer have brakes. So make sure, make sure, make sure that you have a chalk. Uh, you chalk your tires, you, you lock your tires in place. There's a lot of good videos about those that may have it, but I haven't dealt with those yet. But I put that on my central list because I want you to know if you have a travel trailer or some kind of rig that unhooks, you will need to have a shot. And the third item for the miscellaneous category is a tire gauge. You must check your pressure. You know when you need to do it. Check your pressure. What we do is before we leave, we're checking the tires. We're, of course, we're walking around our, our rig and, and checking things. Uh, if we've been setting up for two or three days we're, or overnight, we're checking the pressure. A blowout and something this heavy, something this big would not be fun or even worse. So It would not make your wife happy. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> so guys, check your pressure. All right, the next three things I consider in the for emergencies you have to have a first aid kit yours will be different they're prepackaged items that you can have a first aid kit with your band-aids or your burn cream or whatever you might need gauze or such so have a first aid kit in case there's a a, a nick a cut or something you need to have that have a first aid kit we had to use that like three times on our last trip band-aids yeah. <laughs> banging a shin. 
are, are banging yourself. So you need to you know, get extra band-aids now that I'm thinking about it. That's essential. Yeah, cut my finger. <laughs> the fifth thing on the miscellaneous category is some kind of toolkit. I'm not telling you what tools you need to go get, but have a basic toolkit in case you need to tighten something up, in case you you need some channel locks to get to get the water pressure regulator attached or unattached. So have a basic toolkit so you can do any kind of minor maintenance. Now as you travel more and more, and as you become more and more handy, I think we'll all become more and more handy as we drive RVs, you might add the different things you might need. You might need bigger sockets or, or different tools, a pipe wrench or something. So um, just know that's going to be a growing kit as it goes. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about is number six is a flashlight or a head, headband. We happen to have a, a, a headlight that will go around your head and you can do things outside at night to take care of any kind of issues or problems. You might want to go check that you heard noise or you think you left a, a, a bay open. We'll put a link to that and more items down below so you can see where we got all the essentials. The head, headlight will come in real handy if you break the rule of three and have to set up camp after dark. Your husband has to use it. That's right. That's right. So these were in no particular order. I broke them down in categories into sewer, five things, into water, five things, into electric, five items, and in the miscellaneous, we had six items. So those are your 21 essential items. Now remember, your rig is different. You might need to have something essential. So if you happen to have a class A, or you happen to have a travel trailer, or a fifth wheel, talk to someone that has those and see what their essentials are. Share this video with them and say, is there anything that I need or that I'm, I'm missing? Brings us to Lynn's question of the day. Lynn? So the question of the day for this week is, what is your um, essential item or maybe I would really rather hear your non-essential items but it's really really helpful when you're traveling or setting up your rig or something like that. Yeah so we want you to put down in the comments sections anything that we missed. You know we're fairly new too. We want to know is there something that we're missing mm -hmm. and if you happen to have a, a different uh, rig such as a class A tr travel trailer or uh, fifth wheel what are some of the items that I didn't think about since I have a class C? So we want you to put that down there. And another thing that I'm interested in, is there something you ran off on your camping trip, one of your first camping trips or maybe your last camping trip? Is there something that you ran off and forgot? It might have been essential, it might not have. What's some of the things you forgot? Put, put that down in the comments section also. Let us remind you, please click that subscribe button. Yes, and if you like the video, click the like button. And the notification bell. Yeah, because we want you to click that notification bell so you'll be the first one to see our next video. Yes. And let's finish with... God bless and many safe travels. Until next time.